remember, remember me, oh Lord. When you come to collect your people, remember me, oh Lord, my God. When you come to collect your people, remember me, oh Lord. Remember me, oh Lord. When you come to collect your people, remember me, O oh Lord, my God, my Father. Don't forget me, Lord. Remember me, Lord. Remember me, Lord. Come to collect your people. Oh Lord, my God, when you come, Lord. Oh yes, remember me, Lord. Remember me, Lord. You come to collect your people. Remember me, oh Lord, my God. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Saved by grace. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Saved by grace. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Saved by grace. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Saved by I am in the number, I am in the number, I am in the number, saved by grace. I am in the number, I am in the number, I am in the number, saved by grace. Amen. Let's worship the Lord and bless his name. Let's pray for God's word to us today. Let the word of God train our soul let the word of God bless our lives Let the Lord minister to people that he sends his word to. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Lord Almighty, 
the living world. I pray that our understanding will be enlightened that we will receive your word joyfully and practice it. We pray the righteous life will be a pleasure, a delight to us. We shall not see burden. Rather, we shall see pleasure, beauty, blessing in your world. Thank you, Father. Bring forth your word to us that we may understand and be happy. Thank you, divine. Your word will bring forth fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm talking to you at this time on supporting holiness movement with your money and material resources. Supporting holiness movement with your money and material resources. When revival of Christ's righteousness and holiness broke out after the Pentecost, those who understood what God was doing among men rose up financially and materially to support it. This is what is required in this our generation with the present present Revival of holiness and righteousness. It should give you pleasure and joy that once again the revival of righteousness and holiness has broken upon the world. that God is personally walking among men in various nations to bring about revival of men, of mankind, of his worshippers to bring them to holiness and righteousness. Of course, this is supposed to happen at the end time before the church, the saints, will be raptured home. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then shall the end come. The end of the church on earth and the end of godliness on earth before the Messiah, the Lord, 
will come in the second coming. End of the church at the rapture. And the end of time at the second coming. It's a joy to announce to you that that revival has come. Amen. And those in the early church who like Simeon witnessed the visitation of the Lord supported it inspired it moved it forward by their material offering in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 2 Acts of Apostles. Chapter 2. I read from verse 37. From verse 37 to 41. Now, when they had this they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do then said Peter unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You can see here. Conviction had poured down upon the people through the gospel. Through the message of the gospel, these were careless people. They never bothered about God. Although called the people of God, they served him with their lips, with their mouth. Their hearts were not with him. The worship of God had turned political. The church the synagogues had become a place of human exaltation. God was not recognized. But because of the divine move, the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon the people and conviction came upon them and they cried out by reason of the world. Men and brethren, what shall we do? We have realized our sin. We are convicted we are, that we have turned away from God. What can we do to come back? That's what the Lord is doing again in our time. The word of God is having meaning in the hearts of men. God has poured down again the spirit of revival. Revival of righteousness and holiness. And this is happening worldwide. Men are receiving the true gospel. They are being taught the world. Conviction is coming upon them. They cry out in their sins. 
in various places and what happens the bible says under the power of the world they were converted and turned to the gospel they accepted the lord jesus about three thousand in one day and got baptized and were added to the church i want to speak in a good conviction that what the Lord is doing in these days, what I see him doing in holiness movement is a great work. The Lord is convicting people of sins, of their evil deeds. Round the world, people are getting converted by the power of conviction. They are turning to Jesus. They are cleaning themselves up they are doing their restitutions. They are repairing their ways. Marriages are being corrected. Stolen properties are being returned to their owners. We see this going on in the world by the spirit of revival. Ministers of the gospel who were ministering without understanding what they were doing now came up to own up and say that our eyes were blind but now having come across the gospel of truth we have accepted this gospel we ourselves need to be laid we want to turn our churches over to the new thing that is going on revival is going on that is what is happening in our time and in Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 42 to 45 the Bible tells us chapter 2 verse 42 to 45 they and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need we see here Yes, righteousness and holiness sustained through the teaching of the word and material offering. Righteousness and holiness sustained by men that understood the gospel, that by men that had experienced the salvation of the Lord. And seeing how sweet the Lord is to them. Men that were joyful that the world was turning to the Lord. That their people were being saved. They supported this gospel. To sustain it. To cause it to move. I must thank the Lord. Because since the Lord brought holiness revival movement alive in our day in my side i've seen people zealous people that the lord has used to sustain this revival that will push this work forward and bring people to it the bible says money answered all things Money answered all things. God is peculiar in his dealing. When Jesus Christ came to bring salvation to mankind upon the earth, God did not manufacture money for him. He did not provide a physical storehouse of money where he could be nourished and the work be sustained. No. He wanted men to participate. He wanted men 
who had inside, who understood what he was doing to arise and support this work. When God gave the children of Israel victory over the Amalekites through the raised hands of Moses, he did not multiply energy to Moses. He did not make the hands of Moses to be steel that would not bend, that would not be tired. No, he expected human beings who see the goodness of the Lord, the victory of the Lord among his people, the blessing the Lord was giving his people to come forth and support the hands of God. Continue moving. And human beings came up, Aaron and Hur, and lifted each one, the, the one, si on the one side of Moses' hand. So it remained steadfastly ah, that the victory might be accomplished because when they saw that without their participation, Moses as a man could be weak. And any time Moses required rest, and brought down his hands they saw the enemy prevailing the revival getting getting delayed everything's getting seized because the hand of moses had become weak when they noticed so they said this walk human participation will be there man must come up in his own part to support what god is doing so Paul took the other direction and Moses the one direction and they raised up the hand of Moses and that victory was accomplished for Jesus and so there must be people that have to rise up and support this revival you want the revival to move fast you want us to move fast in righteousness and holiness to cause the world to turn to God fast to cause the society to turn to God far, rise up in support. Materially, financially, to cause this work to run, to cause materials to be produced, to cause evangelism materials, to raise up workers and support these workers and cause the vision to run very fast. The Lord has given the vision the Lord has given the, 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 what is required for the vision, the mean of the vision, the materials of the vision. He has given this. All now is human beings. Where are you? Are you happy for the revival that the Lord has brought in our generation? Are you happy for what God has done in your life? And what you see God doing in our society, in your society. Are you happy? Don't you see we are moving slow? Come up, support this work quickly. And let's run fast. God wants us to finish this work fast. Because he wants his return fast. People rush up to support this work. To cause it to be done. To achieve the revival of righteousness and holiness. Yes. Verse 45 tells us. And let's read 44 and 45. And all that believed were together. And had all things come on. And sold their possessions and goods. And parted them to all men. As every man had need. What was their condition? They had come from various nations for Pentecost. For the feast of Pentecost. And discovered the new thing that the Lord had done. Thousands and, and thousands of the Jews had come from all over the world. And so, when they saw this new thing new program of god the long awaited promise being fulfilled yes they said 
they were not going home immediately. They were so excited. And the converts were multiplying. They said, this work must be sustained. And some had houses. They had land in costly Jerusalem. Thank God the Lord preserved those lands and houses. For, for this time as this, as it was said in to Esther, who knew it? Whether thou art kept in the kingdom for such a time like this. Thank God the, their lands were there. Their houses were there. They sold them. Everybody said they sold them. Exactly. And brought their prices. The money realized. And placed them under the apostles for distribution to be made. That these who had come from various places should not go. Let them remain and, and drink of this revival. So when they go, they will spread it. So let it become a retreat. A retreat. So they had enough money to feed thousands and thousands of people. With the children that were there every day for several, several, several periods. I'm talking about this man. When we go to heaven, we shall be told the man. This good man who supported this gospel. I'm saying so because there are people. Is it that they don't value the revival of the Lord? They don't value the holiness going on. They don't value the cleansing going on. They don't value the names of people entering into the book of life. They have all the resources. They have all the lands. They have all the houses. But they are there. The gospel have needs, has needs. There's thing to do to move this gospel and multiply this revival fast. We have books to distribute, to print more and distribute. We have messages in terms to spread all over the world. We have various material evangelical materials to send them out we have people to send out money money we have we have buildings to raise up to gather these people together around the world people we have sent out to support are their people like as it was in the early church that God has called to support this world. Brother, don't slack. This work must run fast. Sister, don't slack. This world, this work must run fast. I don't believe that we are all poor people here. No, there are a few people that are able. The poorest being a child in the days of Jesus, but he had five fishes and five loaves and two fishes that he had brought for himself poor young boy and that was taken to bless the people of God you have something in your life you have something in your hand to bless the gospel of Jesus to push it forward in Jesus name 46 to 47 and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved we see here growth and unity of the believers unity and growth of the church growth of the church because of the effort people were making now the international bible study has begun what effort are you making to bring the people in this city to this program either connect online or be physically present which way are you participating i say god has his portion and you have your portion. What effort are you making? Whom have you contacted? Telephoned? 
to ensure he is connected to this ongoing revival. Whom have you brought? Whom have you informed? That revival is going on. Revival of holiness and righteousness through the world is going on. Whom are you bringing? Whom are you paying his her transport money to bring to the presence of the Lord? Whom are you even buying telephone, handset for to get connected in the place where he is to get this word? See, you have your portion. You have your portion in the ongoing revival. It is going on already. John asked Jesus, are you he to come or do we expect another? Jesus said, I am he to come. I am he. The signs are already going on. Don't think revival in any in way anymore. It has come already. All the revival of holiness and righteousness is requiring a supporters. Supporters. People that will sponsor it. People that will support it. You want to build a fire? The fire has already been kindled. All that is required is what the fire should burn upon. Supply the materials that should cause the fire to, to enlarge. Support. Give support to cause this revival to flower. In a short time, this mighty hall shall be filled with people in this city. But it will require a work. It will require a work that when it is the Bible study day, you go around to the city. You go to gather the people. You go around and say something is going on. Revival. The Lord has sent it. The Lord has sent it. The revival preceding the rapture is already going on. The holiness of mankind. Return to Jesus. It's already going on. Join up. Join up. Join up. This is your work. This is your work. That's what God wants you to do. And you will see growth. You will see righteousness. You will see holiness. You will see the glory of the Lord. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, Acts chapter 4 verse 34 to 36 the Bible says neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having learned, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Joseph had learned, sold it, and brought the money, and laid the whole money at the apostles' feet for revival. This was a human being like you. Are you saying he loved Jesus more than you do? Why was he not material conscious? Did he not need that land planning to be great? Let my greatness go for Jesus. I want the gospel to multiply upon the earth. Let revival that has come in my eyes never die. Let not this revival die. I will do all to move this revival, sustain this revival to the next generation. If you plant your corn, your crop, and you want it to be strong, fertilize it when it is still young. 
then it will grow with a very big stalk it will grow healthy that is how it is now this is the revival we need something to cause this revival to be strong and that is material resources that is money look at Joseph land is an investment that can be converted to money anytime many people buy lands now for the future so it's equal to somebody who has money in his account much money there is equal to such a person and you might be the one saving money for nothing else keeping it there and this man said that money the lord inspired me to keep it what it is, what is it for i cannot tell but this is the the time for that money this is the time why that money was kept there this gospel must move brother i'm telling you we need the gospel to move we want god to move among us we want to do our part my sister we want to do our part that this revival of holiness revival of righteousness that god has given to us my fly in the sky like the pillar of cloud elijah's servant saw in the sky and suddenly it filled the whole the whole sky that is how we want it to be this revival my brother we must not keep quiet the lord has given it the word has been given the wisdom has been given the man with the word has been given the mean with the word ha have been given women anointed have been given what are we waiting for let us fly and it requires you to stand up and do your part it requires you to release your hand to sponsor this gospel to move it forward that is what is required of you and joseph having land sold it the people they supported one another they strengthened one another they built up one another they supported the ministers of the gospel who had left all things to preach this gospel supported them there was no lack that's what the bible says yes none of them lacked anything verse 34 neither was there any among them that lacked neither was there anyone among those company of people that lacked because the people gave willingly with all their heart free with all their mind love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul all your strength all your mind all your resources that's what God wants. In Acts of Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 1 to verse 11. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a portion. I mean, sold a possession and, asked, um, and kept back part of the prize. His wife also been privy to it and brought, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Anania, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land whilst it remained? Was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came to 
came on all them that had these things. And the young men arose, warned him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things these people satan filled them they wanted to pollute the revival they were against this revival all on money they promised we will sell the land we are going now we are going to sell our land and dedicate the whole money unto god Remember the move of the Holy Spirit among the people. Remember the work of the Holy Spirit among the people. These people, sinners, pretenders, hypocrites, wanted to pollute the move of the Holy Ghost, wanted to bring lie into it. After having met their promise, they went to, to sell this land, their property, and then they couldn't do as it was. They couldn't do come this is your property why did you even make promise why did you say you would do this why did you claim that you're going to do this it remains your property anytime you would sell it it is yours if you sold it then it was your money but where did you come into covenant where are you polluting holiness where are you bringing life you went to sell this thing and you cut part of the money yes and you agreed that you would go and say it was the whole money you agreed that you would go and tell them it was the whole money and see you saying it is the whole money and agreeing in the presence of the holy ghost i'm telling you revival is going on don't temper with the money of God that comes into your heart. Don't temper as a leader, as a pastor, wife of pastor. Don't conspire with your husband to affect the money of God. In this period, we want to fly in revival. Human beings are making their contribution. To sponsor revival. You and your husband are keeping back part of it. You and your wife are diverting this money. To use it any way you want. Date is waiting. Date is waiting. Because you're doing that in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Why are you telling lies? Why are you embezzling in the presence of the spirit of the last days? That is working hard to save me and take them to heaven. You are a unit leader. You are a chapter leader. You are a coordinator. You are a treasurer. Whatever title you have. And you are working. And money of God is in your hand. And the money is required for the revival of holiness and righteousness in the end time. And you are playing game into in the money of the Lord. You are hindering revival by hoarding this money. By turning it to your use. By doing business with God's money, death is waiting for you. That is it. In this age, money is required to the fullness to support the hands of Moses. Money is required in the fullness to support the walking of the Holy Ghost among the people of God. Beware!
it might end up being dead to your life. That's what we need to understand. Because the Lord will judge the liars and the hypocrites. Now, we have seen how in the respective places where you are, in the unit, in the chapter, in, in the state, in the zone, anywhere you are, in the churches, even in the denominations you belong to, as long as they have the vision of righteousness and holiness, and this revival is working there, support it. Support it with all your money. If the, if the fire has fallen upon that church, support them. That is what the Lord is talking about. Yes. Now, the early church had a headquarter. Headquarters. Everybody say, the early church had a headquarters. And the headquarters was in Jerusalem. Yes. If you, the Lord has brought you to holiness revival movement, you have a headquarters. And the headquarters is in Nigeria. You might belong to another denomination, but you are a member of Holiness Revival Movement. Where you are, the Lord has brought you in. We are feeding on the, same, on the same meal. You have a headquarters. And the headquarters is in Abuja, Nigeria. Very important for you to know this. Because... The early church spread everywhere, still remembered their headquarters and made contributions to the headquarters. They made contributions. Where the vision originated, where the power of the gospel originated, where the ancients of the church are, where the authority of the church rested there was contribution to the to jerusalem the bible tells us in the book of acts of apostles acts of apostles chapter 11 verse 20 to 27 to Tati. It says, And in those days there came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great death throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples every then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas. And so, elders, where did the elders dwell? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. They sent their help there. They remembered the headquarters. They remembered the elders. Yes. That is what the word of God is saying unto us. Remember your, the headquarters. Look at it in Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 1. Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 1 And Saul was consenting unto his day And at that time there was a great persecution against the church Which was at Jerusalem And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria What's the next three words there? Except the apostles, the elders dwelt in Jerusalem The controlling force never moved 
they were in Jerusalem and these people needed to be supported that is the power of the gospel the center of the gospel they had to be supported the people that received this commission and saw the Jesus of the commission with their own eyes and were the live wire of the gospel around the world they recognized them materially they recognized them financially the saints of Jerusalem were recognized and supported death was to come upon all the walls but where did they single out Judea headquarters the regions the region of the origination of Christianity now look at it in the book of first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 to verse 4 first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 to verse 4 the Bible tells us here what the early church did even under the apostle Paul who came to claim I have walked more than they all yet under him by his instruction in the inspiration of the Holy Ghost material resources material support money property and all were sent to Jerusalem the headquarters look at it in chapter 16 verse 1 to verse 4 now concerning the collection for the saints as I have given order to the churches of Galatia Galatia even so do, do ye upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by himself in store as God hath prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come and when I come whomsoever ye shall approve by your, heart, by your letters then will I send to bring your libra liberality unto where Jerusalem and, it be, and if it be me that I go also they shall go with me even Paul recognize Jerusalem I want you to know you must recognize the headquarters of holiness revival movement it is the practice of the church in the early church whatever unit you are leading whatever chapter you are leading whatever zone whatever state whatever nation the Lord has put you there for this work recognize the headquarters of this revival recognize the headquarters of this revival that the commissioned men that received this vision originally from the Lord they are still in the headquarters they are still in control they are still working the international director is there you must recognize the headquarters and send support and send your commitment financial commitment material commitment to up to your Jerusalem that is situated in Kuali Abuja Nigeria you are a visionary preacher like Paul you have much to do for God like Paul you have much program in your place in your ministry as the Lord has given you like Paul I am saying scripture says me contribution steer your people Paul said as I have spoken to the churches in Galatia so am I writing to you churches in Corinth in the same way I will inform the churches in Philippi I will inform the churches in Colossae all the churches I preach to I will make them to know that the headquarters of this world is in Jerusalem that the commission apostles are in Jerusalem that we should recognize them that it is the will of God that we should recognize them sponsor them support their hands they have more visions to do God is doing something among them God is using them we need money too we need resources too but Jerusalem portion must be there the headquarters the headquarters 
God wants it so. If God did that for Jerusalem in the old time, when the church began, how much more will the Lord do so now, command you so now, consigning your Jerusalem, Kuali Abuja, Nigeria. And how much more for the vision? We are even just beginning. We are just beginning. Whatever we have done, we are just starting. The vision is bubbling in our hearts. We want to fly. We are humming like the aeroplane. We are getting ready to fly up to the sky. That this gospel should, be, should fly up and move to nations. We need your support for the aeroplane to take off and fill the world with this gospel of the kingdom yes that is the commission the word of god in first corinthians second corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to verse 7 second corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to verse 7 the Bible says, moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of your joy, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Is this talking about giving to Jerusalem? Is took their churches in Macedonia, the churches of Ephesus. Paul is saying these people really don't have the money, but they are so zealous, they are so committed, they matter all their strength to get something. In fact, they gathered in abundance to send to the headquarters, to send to Jerusalem, the sins that are in. Jerusalem commitment for to their power a bare record yeah and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the of the ministering to the saints and these they did not as we hoped, but faith gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. In so much that we desired Titus that was, that as he had begun so, he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us see that ye abound in this grace also was this speaking about these people these people the churches in Macedonia they were not sinners like Ananias and Sapphira they were not half-hearted people like Ananias and Sapphira they were not selfish people like Ananias and Sapphira. No. They were people that loved God. They gave themselves first to the Lord. When we talk about supporting the world, we're not telling sinners that come and support this gospel. We're telling people who have given their lives to Jesus. We're telling people who have repented from sin, repented from occultism, repented from witchcraft, repented from idol idolatry, repented from adultery, repented from fornication, repented from, from every treachery, and have turned their lives to Jesus. Your money should also be turned to Jesus. Your money should follow you behind. You have given yourself your material follows. When a woman gets married to a man, then her material resources follow. That is it. Let your material resources follow you to Jesus. 
Let your material power follow you to Jesus. Let your riches follow you to Jesus. That is what the churches in Macedonia did. After they had committed themselves to, to, to Jesus, then they committed themselves to us, leaders of the gospel. Were they only supporting the churches in Jerusalem? No, even we also, they supported us. Even we also, they supported us. They gave themselves to supporting this gospel everywhere. Everywhere. Not that we say all the money should come to the headquarters. You need money there. Give also there too. Just give yourself to give on. Let the Lord direct your resources. So that your resources will sponsor end time revival. Revival of righteousness and true holiness. Yes, the contribution to look at it in chapter 12, chapter 16 of First Corinthians, and in verse 1, First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. Now, consigning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. As I have given order, there must be so, the, Paul was the one leading the church. He planted the church. Every other branch that grew from where he planted was still under Paul. The main trunk belongs to Paul. How much more the branches? So, I have given order. What if they didn't do it? They will be breaking order. They will be breaking commandment. Except for any reason they had to clear up with Paul. Who might say, okay, in your case, let it be this way, let it be that way. Otherwise, it is an order. It should be done. It should be done. This is the voice of the leader. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. I'm talking to you, ministers and holiness revival movement. Obey the voice of order and submit to it. Don't have another contrary spirit. Don't have your own mind. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves because it's by them you will stand. You will make progress. You will earn favor in the sight of God. For they are the ones that watch over your souls and give account to God. Let them not complain to God over you. Let not your leader complain to God over you because the Bible says, for such is unprofitable unto you. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. For if you give them grief, such is unprofitable to you. Whatever you achieve, outside order has no profit in the sight of the living God has no profit. So make sure you carry out commandment. You obey commandment. That's what the word of God is telling us. Very important. All churches were to make contribution to the headquarters to strengthen the work there. What are you doing that contribution for? To strengthen the work in the headquarters. Because the head must be strong. The headquarters must be strong. Every nation fortifies its own headquarters. Every nation fortifies the headquarters. All, all armory required for the headquarters victory and protection must be provided. 
must be in the headquarters though the other states and uh, other uh, part of the government part of the nation could have some stores of armory but the headquarters number one we must fortify our headquarters let the headquarters remain fresh then you will remain fresh over there let the headquarters get weak then the weakness will spread to you for the waters flow from top get it fortified that is what the Lord is instructing you strengthen it and why were they given to the headquarters to show oneness we are one we are not headquarters church but we are one with headquarters church for what we are doing now proceeded from the headquarters what we are doing now headquarters gave being to it headquarters gave rise to it that is why we want to demonstrate as the head is so are the feet for we partake of one blood you're showing oneness again it is a show of loyalty to the headquarters loyalty to show that we submit to you we are for you we are for your interest we are for your advancement as you say we will do david called one of his men who ran to him and said are you coming to me he said as your life is so is mine i am for your interest i am for your defense if you die what am i living for what is my hope how am i thinking to survive i know the grace of god in your life i know the power of God in your life I am aware of your calling I knew the prophecies that, are, that went forth on you I know what God said he will achieve in you I am for you to strengthen your hands for this war that is why you are making contributions to show your loyalty to the headquarters that is what we want to want to let you know the kings of the old time the kings of the earth will go to other nations and conquer them and put them under tribute make them tributaries so that they could be sending tribute to them that's what they would do send tribute to show we recognize you we submit to you we are, it is by your mercy we are living that's in the kings of the old time ours for this gospel we are behind you in the commission of the lord we are behind you in the success of the commission we are behind you in the battle against the devil we are behind you in the in the vision of eternal life for humans human souls that is why you are making this commitment you're sending this support to the headquarters it's a rewardable service this support is a rewardable service in second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 but this i say he which so with sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which so with bountifully shall reap also bountifully you see it's a rewardable service according as you open your heart to it sparingly bountifully is a matter of the heart and not 
of the material substance. Although you may see it in the quantity that oh, this person gave in abundance, that abundance you are seeing might still be sparingly because of the type of heart that person possesses. It is from the heart. Is the heart open to this commandment? Order. Or the heart is close to it. That is where the sparingly and the bountifully comes up about. Are you happy, joyful, doing this? Or you are just managing to fulfill righteousness? And then, let's give something. To fulfill righteousness but the heart is not willing you are not fully open you are sowing sparingly sowing sparingly might also be you are not giving to the full capacity according to your strength you could have done more but your heart didn't yield your heart didn't open fully and you didn't do to your capacity as God would expect of you. Mean may be satisfied, but God is not. He who pushes the resources under you, pushes the resources to you, knows that you are so inspiringly. Was he not there when they were given offering in the synagogue, in the temple in Jerusalem? And he saw big men coming with much money and putting into the use to into the offering and then an old widow coming with two pens and cast it into the offering basket and Jesus called the attention of his disciples do you see this man they gave sparingly not according to their capacity not measuring up to the blessing I have given them. But do you see that woman? All she had in the house, she has in the house, is those two pens. All she has brought it and has given all she has bountifully. But it's two pens. What can two pens buy? But that's all she has. It tells the heart, is God interested in money? Then he said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. If I were hungry, would I tell you? I knew what to do. All the money of the government of nations. He didn't know how to, what to do. If Satan can command me to bring money to him in all currency and fills his kingdom with it, will not God do abundantly over Satan, above what Satan is doing? No, he's not interested in money. He is interested in the hearts of people. Full heart. Full heart. Supporting his cause. Not the amount. He can multiply it. He can multiply it. That's why we go ahead in his projects, knowing that he will send the money. Even if we see no money, let's go. If he has motivated us, if he has inspired us, let's move. He will send the money. God knows how to send money. But he's interested in your heart. What is your heart? Who gives? Your heart. Sparingly, then the reward shall be according to your heart. To human beings, they would say according to the quantity you give. Well, that is human being. But to God, according to the state of your heart. Because the state of your heart determines the quantity. The state of your heart determines the quantity you who have your tithes you have it you pay small out of it it's the state of your heart but 
the quantity you give is big. People will be laughing and say, thank God, we praise God. You gave like that, those rich men in the temple at Jerusalem. The Lord knew it's not in your full strength. He knows. Because your heart didn't open fully. So, take it this way. He that giveth sparingly, his reward shall be sparingly. He that giveth bountifully, his reward shall be bountifully. For there's no, there is no inequality with God. He's a just God. Yes. That is what we need to know. It's a rewardable service. Therefore, willingly serve the Lord. Willingly give to God as an individual and as a church, as a unit, as a chapter, as a zone, as a state, as a nation. Willingly give to God. Willingly give to the headquarters willingly support the churches of Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 to 15 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 to 15 for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice. For this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. He's talking to the Corinthian Christians. Are you not older than the Ephesian Christians, the Macedonian Christians? Has not the gospel begun among you before the Macedonian Christians? We expected you to be forward in this matter. Are you not senior to the Macedonian Christians? Are you no more popular than the Macedonian Christians? Are you not richer than the Macedonian Christians? I expected of you to have stood up zealously to do this. Therefore, I counsel you, arise! And do this. Arise. And do this. Now therefore. Perform the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to will. So there may be a performance also. Out of that which ye have. You showed a sign. You indicated you were willing to support. The work. In the headquarters. You showed it. Now the full time has come. Do it now. Do it now. Arise and do it. Yes. Do it according to what you have. Don't go and be borrowing money. From bank. From individuals, I want to support the headquarters. And you're going to borrow. Do it according to what you have. Otherwise, when you come to pay what you borrow, you'll be murmuring. And your blessings will disappear. Do it according to what you have. Sparingly, bountifully. According to what you have. For I mean not that other may be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he, had, he that had gathered much had nothing over. And he that had gathered little had no lie. For the church of God is one. 
I am saying, give bountifully because there are places they are similarly members of the body of Christ. They are running also this race of righteousness and holiness, but they are in financial disadvantage. They are in financial disadvantage. But for you, Jesus has given you by your placement or kind of worshippers. People that can enrich you. By the nature of your nation. Money can easily come to the hands of people. But there are some nations. It's hard for them. Even for, to, even for the men of God. The people of God. The saints of Christ to eat is not easy. It's not easy. So, I am not saying bring in in abundance so that we can enjoy. Rather, we distribute to others. We know places where pains are. Starvation is. Where no resources are hands, the gospel cannot move. We know places like that. That is why we are saying, give bountifully that they also may be eased. That your own abundance can also bless some other people. That the gospel might speed up in that region. That's what we're saying. And you too, there may be a time, for we don't know how the world changes. Who knows that a time will come, everybody in the world will sit at home. We don't know how the world changes. It might come to be, you might also be in need. And the wind shall turn over, facing your direction. To ease you up. To bless you. So that at all times, as the manner of the, of the wilderness, people went to gather every day what they wanted to eat, according to the measure. And on uh, on, on the day preceding the Sabbath day, they would gather along with that of the Sabbath day. And as much as you gather, when you come home and measure them, is the same. None is bigger than the other. There's a miracle in that thing. The ones who just gathered small would discover that the thing swell. As he put small, it swells. The one that gathered plenty. He discovered that as he's cooking it, it's, coming, it's, it's, it's shrinking. But all together, it's as if the food is looking at your eye. How many people are here? So that I can expand or reduce and make sure there's no waste. Therefore, that is it. So give. Don't say, I am keeping for the future. It might disappear. That money came to serve a purpose. It came by miracle. It works by miracle. That is what the word is saying. Yes. Do it willingly so that you can share your blessing with others who, have, who don't have rich churches shall be judged for not sharing their resources with the others. Mostly, it is because they don't know God and are indeed not one with others. Some of these churches that gather money around us suppose they were Christian churches and looked at others as their brother church and shared these billions they are storing. Some have their own personal bank. Some, they, it's too much it's too much for the country, for the country, so they send them abroad to go and hide. Some dig apartments somewhere in their house. Some mush, move to the bush and dig the ground and bury this money. Suppose they were true Christians and spread this money to all children of God, including me here like this. See how fast the gospel will move. See how the gospel would have flown in the air. But they are not Christians. 
they shall be judged for the abundance they have accumulated. The interest of Jesus is not in them. They celebrate the money. They celebrate it. The glory and say we are prosperity churches. We will demonstrate prosperity by accumulating money. Come and see my money. Come and see how much we have. Our pastor, his shoes. His shoes is $10,000. Do you think that, that shoe is from the world? Is it in this head here? It must have become from somewhere. Oh, just come. The suit of our pastor. The suit of our pastor is $100,000. Where did you buy it from? Satan must have given that suit. I'm telling you, they are not for God. Otherwise, their bounty would have been distributed to other churches of Christ, to other ministers of Christ that none would have lacked and this gospel would have taken over the earth. This gospel would have subdued our nation. All these other religions making noise would have been silenced. But they are not with us in the company of Christ. And we that are in righteousness, let's not do like them. Let's not do like them. Then you will now have the formula, the, the promise of God fulfilled. Give and it shall be given to you. Praise down. Shaking together, running over. That's what God says. That will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God, I'm mean verse 7 and 8. For every man according as he purposed, purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Give not in your wisdom, carnal wisdom. I said something to the coordinators. That about one month or so, a coordinator said, uh, you know, please, that money that came in, into the account, let's get something quickly to... To use it for. Otherwise, the headquarters, when the report comes, they will know that we have much money. Are you seeing? Is that a Christian? Is that a Christian? God knows how to locate such ones and silence them. You are not for this revival. The principle of revival says where it is in abundance, distribute to where it is lacking, so that there should be no lack. That's the principle of abundance. Of, of this prison revival. That is what is to be done. Practice it. Do it. Do it willingly. Not with grudges. Not with murmuring. Not with carnal wisdom. Giving your report, give full report. They don't know the Lord can send much money to you just towards the report time. The month has not yet ended. It's just on the 29th and the Lord told somebody, go and give your tithe there. I want to test them whether they will add that to the report they're giving to the headquarters. I just want to check this man. It's on the 29th. Then a heavy tithe was dropped in the offering. Instead of giving them joy to Ananias and Sapphira, it will give them sorrow. Because, uh -uh, why did you not pay this thing earlier? So we would have used it out. Now that you are paying on the 29th and the month is ending tomorrow, how are we? This money, will, they will see it. Can you see this carnality? May God destroy this carnality among us in Jesus' name. We are not for money. We are not children of money. Money is not the promise God has made for us. Money is not eternal life. Money is not the, the subject of our preaching or the object of our preaching. 
we preach Jesus Christ the Lord and we preach eternal life to sinners condemned to hell and not money we worship God and not mammon therefore give mammon, mammon its place it's not fit let it not affect your righteousness never be frank about it speak the truth about money don't tell lies because you want to make money you want to cover how much you have tell lies don't tell lies note if the arm robber catches you may the lord keep you from them and say how much do you have hey in fact you just collected this money and have planned that you will buy a car I'm robbers are asking me how much I have. And you really know how much you have. Except the Lord puts a wisdom in your mouth. Don't tell lies. Are you hearing me? Except the Lord puts a wisdom. And the wisdom of God is pure. First pure. It's uncorruptible. It's undefiled. If he gives you what to say. Maybe how much is the money? Well... I have just collected money from somewhere. Maybe the Lord says so. If he tells you that and you say it, it will overcome that man. He will not go, he will not say anything further. How much money? How much money do you have? Why are you asking me? Might be enough for that man. If the Lord gives you what? Otherwise, if no wisdom comes, God then says, Tell the truth. I have two million in my pocket. How is it two million? Your pocket is small. They are in dollars. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't mind the celebration because Jesus and Satan are both there. Jesus is there. Satan is ready to accuse him of the man that says he's a child of Jesus. Now he is brought into temptation. And Jesus is watching. Will you do my word? Will you speak the truth? When they asked me whether I was the son of God, because they would crucify me, did I deny? Say it. Tell them how much you have. And if you tell how much you have, it's just Jesus to bling his eyes on Satan. And Satan will bow out. Indeed, this is your own. Don't tell lies on money to keep money to make money. No, tell the truth. Everybody say, Tell the truth. Say it again. Beautiful. That's the mind of God for you. Now, I end up with administration over this blessed service of material gift. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I mean chapter 8 rather, verse 16 to 24. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16 to 24. But thanks be to God, which put the, faith, the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation. But being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only. But who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. According, I'm avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you, whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and my fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches 
and the glory of Christ. Wherefore, show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of, your burst, and of our boasting on your behalf. This service of the church should be administered in righteousness and holiness. The persons to be put in charge should be holy and righteous men. Tithes and you know, holy and righteous men are the people to be put in charge of money. I tell you what a young man was doing. Even in deeper life, when I was pastoring, he was in one of the branches. What happened? When he was the accountant of the church, about a church of about 800 people. When someone came in to pay tithes and brought check, he would tell the person, can you sign cross sign over uh, the cross check so that I can withdraw it in cash. Put my name there. I will go to the bank because the pastor will need it immediately. I immediately need it. Instead of bank taking days to, to uh, transfer the money to our account, I can just go to bank and withdraw. And the man feels he's dealing with a righteous man. This is a righteous church. I have confidence in this church. But the man that is there is a devil. Have I not chosen you twelve? And one is a devil even under Jesus' ministry. Now, the man will believe and write it. He will go and withdraw money for himself. But ask him to go and lead prayer. Ah, demons must fly. Every power. And the voice is there. I'm telling you, they know how to wild energy and release. Solomon said, and my wisdom remained with me, although I was backsliding. So that is how it is. The Bible tells us, get righteous people to be in church of money. If you're giving them money to take to the headquarters, you're giving them money to take to the bank. You're sending them to withdraw from the bank. Make sure they are righteous. That they don't waste the money of God. That they don't see their vision. One of such, a driver of a man of God, I had a story, was sent to the bank to carry huge money driver of the man of God hearing the word every day every time seeing the man of God performing the miracles and all but when he went and got and they account they have given him the money okay take to the church he came out and he carried Satan also and Satan said this is the day you have been receiving promise you will become a big man. He disappeared with that money. Disappeared. Had walked in the church, I don't know, 30 years, 20 years, at least I'm not sure it's less than 20 years. And driven the man of God for such a period. Not everybody is faithful. Examine these people. These people who read, don't read Bible, they don't pray. They're just Christians that don't read Bible. They're just Christians. When the word of God is going on, they're doing another thing. They go to the toilet. They go to, to go, they go, they go and sit under a tree and are conversing with other people. These are they, and you think they're Christians. Pray well. Jesus told me, pray very well before you employ a person. Ask around who he is. Ask where. So, you who are doing accounting job, be careful. 
That profession is a terrible profession. I think only few go to heaven from that profession. Judas didn't escape it. Money! Money! Wisdom is power! And money says, I am power. God is the Lord! And Mammon said, I am the Lord. You must choose whom you will serve. You can't serve God and Mammon. You can't. If you are of the Judas kind, you will fight Jesus. In fact, the way Jesus is using money, you will accuse him. This oil that they're wasting on you now would have been sold for much money and given to the poor. <laughs> it's because when they sell it for much money, the accountant will collect and record and keep. He's the treasurer. Then he will help himself there. But the money that he said, they are pouring everything on Jesus. He was not happy. He was not happy. I say, you in church of God's money, you are doing a dangerous work. Either you steal it for yourself, you borrow it for yourself in the name of borrowing, you cover records, or you support a corrupt leader so that you can have your own. You are a yeser to the coordinator, to the pastor who himself is corrupt and is not following the rule. You do not report him as he's the one giving you eternal life and the eternal life is money. He's the one showing you, showing you mercy and the mercy of money preparing you, fattening you for the day of damnation. When ye shall say, money, money, I need you no more. The love of money is the root of evil. The love of money is the root of evil. I need you no more. You'll be crying. You'll be crying. You'll be crying. I need you no more. But you are in hell. Because you love money more than Jesus. You didn't defend Jesus' money. Now, wisdom tells us, therefore, you are a wealthy man. You have much money to give in offering. Please, you belong to a small unit. Don't give that much money there. Know where you will give that much money. Otherwise, it will serve a temptation to those people there. That money will cause the unit leader to resign. <laughs> Let's rise up upon our feet. Amen. Pray. Righteousness and holiness will be sponsored in this end time. And the Lord will raise the people up. God will raise up people to sponsor his righteousness. And that you will be one of them. Don't mind your poverty. It is the heart required. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Tell him you will be a sponsor of this gospel of righteousness and holiness so that the gospel should fly for human beings must give their support it was support they, they gave their support in the church of christ Righteousness and holiness should rule holiness revival movement. The Lord will give us faithful people, righteous people that will administer money, not selfish people.
Tell the Lord to use you as a medium for this revival. Offer yourself a living sacrifice for this work. Tell the Lord to use you at this end time revival. Submit to this gospel and be fruitful unto the kingdom of God. Father, we appreciate you for your word. We thank you, Father Lord, for your mercy over our lives, for revealing this truth to us, for teaching us these ways. We are joyful, Father, we worship you. We thank you. Appreciate the Lord for knowing this truth. Father Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Thank you for blessing us, Father Lord, with your own adulterated word of salvation. We're joyful. We appreciate you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. We worship you. Thank you for the privilege to hear these words. For the world is filled with evil. Thank you for the understanding that will require the spirit of discernment in dealing with one another. For out of the tribe there was a devil. So Father, give us wisdom and understanding. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the understanding to be zealous for contributing for this revival that is spreading all over the world. May your name alone receive glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to give our offering now. Hold on to your offering. Let us pray. Lift up your offering.